Uh, and the news was uh, that has, I don't believe it's been confirmed, but nobody's denied it at OpenAI is that in order to get this additional investment of $6.6 .6 billion, um, they had to like agree to try to get out of this nonprofit situation. So I, I was curious about like how these entities are set up. What, what is the structure of this? So I went and did a little research and I, I created a nice little chart for everyone. So there was no so, AI that could have done this for you? Yeah. Um, probably, but I found it helpful for me to actually construct this myself. But I did use perplexity to do the research for this, uh, which you know helped me figure out what entity controls what, who does what, all that sort of thing. So um, if you were looking at my screen here on the live stream, you can see a bunch of like circles, nested circles and all that stuff, right? So um, I'll, I'll, I'll also do my best to explain this verbally for all of our uh, podcast listeners. So the uh, highest level entity is OpenAI Inc., which is a Delaware 501c3 not-for-profit. And it has full control over a second entity, which is called OpenAI GP LLC. GP stands for general partner. This is a manager entity that is disregarded for tax purposes. And this entity controls two for-profit companies, OpenAI LP and OpenAI Global LLC. They're both for-profit companies and they have different investors. As far as I could tell, the LLC, OpenAI Global LLC, has a $13 billion investment from Microsoft. That was the first big investment that OpenAI received, and that was for 49% of that entity. And the purpose of that entity is to focus on R&D activities and commercializing AI technologies. So that's the first for-profit entity. And very importantly, this entity has a profit cap, meaning that Microsoft and any other investors that are in this entity that I wasn't aware of, they can only earn at most 100 times in profit off their initial investment. So for example, if you invest $10 million, the most you can earn in profit is a billion dollars. Now that's a lot of money, right? But it's looking like OpenAI has developed this world-changing technology, and so wouldn't you rather earn a thousand times or 10,000 yeah, times? A thousand billions, right? Yes. Right. A uh, hundred times is great, but it's not like as good as the investors in some unicorn companies. Like uh, if you'd invested in Amazon early, you'd have earned far more than a hundred times your initial investment, right? So this profit cap is really important. And the purpose of the profit cap is so that the nonprofit, which controls all of these entities, benefits from the research that is being done. And all the profits in excess of that profit cap, they have to go back to the nonprofit and they have to be used for charitable purposes. They have to be used for the mission of the nonprofit. There's a second entity, and this is the one that's been in the news. It's called OpenAI LP, Limited Partnership. This is also a for-profit, entity. And its primary purpose is as a financial vehicle to raise capital for AI development. There are many investors in this round, and the latest 6.6 .6 billion went into this entity, according to my research. This entity also has a 100 times profit cap. So that 6.6 .6 billion can only become 100 times more than that, 606 billion. That's the most profit that any of these investors could ever see. And anything in excess of that for all time would have to go to the nonprofit to be used for charitable pur purposes. Again, the reason that OpenAI is considering getting out of this nonprofit is because of that profit cap. This could be one of the most valuable companies in the history of the world. So we've got OpenAI Inc., the overall Delaware 501c3. We've got a fully controlled general partner LLC. And then that general partner manages the LP and the OpenAI Global LLC. So the question is, in my mind, how does OpenAI get out of the nonprofit? How do they get these entities out of this nonprofit and unlock the profit cap? 
if just that's what drag they want that to circle do. outside. You just grab it and drag it, Blake. You solved it. Well, it turns out that it's actually kind of tricky to do this because what is the real big benefit of a nonprofit, David? Taxes. Right. You don't pay taxes. Yeah, don't pay taxes. Nonprofits don't pay taxes. So when you want to convert the assets of a nonprofit to a for profit company, or rather, let's say you want to dissolve a nonprofit and transfer the assets. Actually, they don't want to dissolve the nonprofit. They just want to transfer the assets, right? So they want to transfer control of this LP, these LLC, this general manager, they want to transfer that to a for profit company, and therefore, thereby unlock this profit cap. Well, there are rules to prevent companies from abusing this. Otherwise, people would start everything in a nonprofit. And then as soon as it starts making money, you know, they would turn it into a for profit, right? Like you could just switch it on yeah. and off, right? Oh, I, I want to pay taxes now. I don't want to pay taxes, taxes now. I want to pay taxes now. I don't want to pay taxes now. That's why these rules exist. So the rule almost everywhere, like I couldn't find any exceptions to this is that if you transfer the assets of a nonprofit to a for profit, the for profit has to pay fair market value for these assets. Which so, makes sense because it's in a way it, you're using this word it transfers out, but in a way it's like they're selling the asset. Now they have this this income, and that's what they have to pay taxes on. Yeah, makes well, the, and and the rule is that the assets of a nonprofit, right? They're supposed to be used for charitable purposes, yeah. so you can't just transfer them to a for profit. Like you, they raised all this money from like donors, right? Yeah. Like Elon Musk to generate these assets, which are supposed to be used for charitable purposes. And the donors expect that to happen. I, Elon Musk would expect that to happen, right? So um, you have to pay fair market value of those assets to the nonprofit or to another nonprofit to then use it for charitable purposes. So what is the fair market value of OpenAI's assets? And it's right there in the news, isn't it? A hundred and what did I say? A hundred and fifty-seven billion dollars? Now, because that's the value of this LP and this LLC that are controlled by this managing entity. So that would be the most that the fair market value of the control of these entities could be for the nonprofit. Think about it. What is, what is the interest in the, of the nonprofit in these for-profit entities? It's the future value of, of the, like the cash flows that could come in to open AI. So, you know, my question about this is when they talk about converting from a nonprofit to a for-profit is like, how much money are they going to have to pay to do it? It's going to be billions and billions and billions of dollars, at least tens of billions of dollars, I think, even if it's not that full amount. Um, one advocacy, advocacy group called Public Citizen wrote an article and said that OpenAI should be required to pay at least $30 billion and share any artificial general intelligence technologies it develops because of the value of that controlling interest. Um, and I, I just think this is like crazy, right? It's crazy to me that OpenAI set itself up this way. And it makes me feel better about myself and about every entrepreneur that screws up entity selection, because this is about the worst mistake you could make, right? You see accountants on, on Twitter all the time saying like, ah, my client set up this rental property in an LLC, or they elected S corp status when they shouldn't have done this, right? And there's all these tax consequences. Like this is, this is crazy. Um, and it's even crazier when you consider that OpenAI is losing $5 billion a year right now. So, Let's say that you know the the value of the nonprofit's controlling interest is like thirty billion dollars, like Public Citizen is saying. That means that in order for the investors to see any profits, OpenAI has to generate thirty billion of profits first. Where is this five billion being burnt at? Like, I think it's compute. I've because met people AI that so work, expensive. it has to be, because I've met people that work for Microsoft, these these global workforces of hundreds of thousands of employees. I don't know where the, or, or people that work for uh, Amazon or people that work for HP, these big, huge companies, or Google, but I've never ran into anybody that works for OpenAI. 
So is it just electricity? They're pay- it's just electricity and compute? Compute time, uh, all these chips they buy, right? These, these uh, GPUs from NVIDIA that can do this AI processing. Like, it is extremely expensive. And, and they're giving away a lot of it for free, essentially, because people are paying 30 bucks a month for ChatGPT, but it's possible that you could use the more compute than $30 because they don't really limit you that much on your queries. I mean, if you use the latest model, they might rate limit you on that. But if you look at the cost of doing these prompts via the API versus what it costs to do in the chat window, you could very easily go over the API value just using the chat. And also there are free versions of ChatGPT that people are using all the time. And so they're you know offering that in order to gain market share. So what I'm trying to say is like, they basically have screwed themselves out of at least tens of billions of dollars by choosing the wrong entity right. structure. Tens of billions of dollars. So the next time a client comes to you and you have to tell them, I'm sorry, you chose the wrong entity structure. This is going to cost you a lot of money, maybe tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars. I guess it could be millions, right? Uh, just you can make them feel better by telling them, Showing don't, them this, you know, don't feel story. too bad. OpenAI lost out on tens of billions of dollars by choosing the wrong entity structure. So it happens even to the best of us. It's insane. And, and there's one other really important point here about why this needs to happen is that the investors in these for-profit entities have zero control because the nonprofit board controls everything. So think about this. You've got Microsoft investing $13 billion here at the beginning. You've got you know another $6.6 billion coming in from these other investors recently. They've raised, uh, I forget what the amount they've raised so far is, but it's like many, many billions of dollars. And normally in a startup, the investors would demand board seats. They would demand like a significant amount of equity, but that's all meaningless from a control standpoint because everything's set up under a nonprofit. And the nonprofit board has full final say over everything. And they've had a lot of people leave, right? The nonprofit board and a lot of drama at the top, including Sam leaving for like a week and then coming back yeah. <laughs> back in the day. Uh, Gator NYC says, was it really a setup mistake or greed overtaking the original altruistic goals? It's a great question. 